Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I am, as always, your host, Seth. Um, today, I have Tanya Alvarez, right? I did that right? First yes. try? Nice. <laughs> yes. She is the owner and chief bottle washer over at Owners Up. And she her g- game is to make sure that everyone can be self-sufficient and really rock their business and their life. Um, at 25, Tanya self-funded her her New York City ad agency with credit cards. Sounds familiar. That's what I did with my little agency. Back in 2007, I was like, yeah, I have to do it with credit cards. And she went from zero to one million in revenue in the first year, which is very impressive. And then she showed the 42 countries and then the Boston and New York Marathon and half Ironman while battling, battling a brittle bone, a rare, a, a rare, Brittle bone condition. That's hard to say. Yeah. So that's impressive that you did all those things with a, you know, with your bones being brittle. I mean, it's, that's insane. But you did it. So rah rah rah. It's awesome. And she's a you know classic underdog who's like not gonna let anything you know keep her down. Rah rah rah. And now she's <laughs> now she's in Minnesota and braving the Minnesota weather. So which I can't really I can relate to right now because it's snowing in Philadelphia. So but not like it doesn't in Minnesota. Not and it's not negative something. So, yeah, I think right now it is uh, negative five. Oh my god, it's like twenty five here. It's not bad. It's just snowing. <laughs> negative twenty. Oh, negative five. Oh, brr. So how's it going, Tanya? How you doing? Great. Thanks for having me here. Always a pleasure. So how did this all get started? What made you want to start an ad agency and do it with credit cards? <laughs> yeah, who does that, right? I um, do. I do. That's how I run my business. That's how I run my business. Yeah, I run it that way. Right, you know. right. You figure it out. It kind of puts you on the hook somehow. Yeah. Uh, so when I graduated, you know, all the startups, there wasn't as many startups going on. So I found the few that were, and I worked every position possible. And then at one point at 25, I was like, wow, I want to start my own thing. I think I have enough kind of played in every mm-hmm. role. So I asked my mother, I'm like, you know, you got to get, get get some sort of feedback from someone. And I yeah. was like, hey, should I start my own thing? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, what happens if I fail? And she goes, you'll be exactly where you are now. And I was like, you just go back and get a job. Yeah. Yeah. And then I go, well, what happens if a company doesn't want to hire me because I failed? She's like, you wouldn't want to work for a company like that. And it's mm-hmm. true. At 25, like you have nothing to lose. So yeah. I went for it and I, we, we, we were in one of those like um, well off, like if my mom wasn't going to save me, nobody in my family could save me financially yeah. at that point. So that's what I did. Credit card and just worked my way through. Yeah. It's scary at times, but you know what? It's worth it at the end. I mean, you went from zero to 1 million in the first year. I didn't do that. I still haven't yeah. done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was hard. It's a lot. And then the craziest thing I did, and I was, cause you're 25 and this is before Instagram. And it was like so yeah. cool to work from anywhere. I wanted to travel because like growing up, I came from a low income household and was my single mom raising four kids. Oh, right? geez, so God bless her. I yeah. never like got to travel or do anything. So I was like, I'm going to travel. So I would go to places, book my birthdays on June 1st. I'd book somewhere right around Memorial Day weekend for like a week. And then around Christmas to New Year's, I'd book something far away. So like think of Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, all those places for two wow. weeks. So this is what really was a trick. So I had a team of people before it was like, I had some people in the U.S. and then yeah. I had people in Colombia. Oh. There you- We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Yeah. So that's why I was able to leverage that. And so I was not micromanaging them. And if I wanted to go away at these places and like, if I was going to go hike Machu Picchu, like there's no internet connection. So yeah, it still if, isn't. If things go, yeah, if things go down, it's going to go down. So it yeah. forced me to create systems and processes yes. that run without me and made me realize like if there's an emergency that's going to happen, my team needs to like step up and do it and I can fix yeah, anything. And, and know how to do it. Yeah. And yeah. know how to do it. Like have like, how would Tanya do it? You know, what would Tanya do? 
And that's the thing with most businesses. Like now most people say they want to be away, but they're terrified. Oh yeah, of it's terrifying. Away. Yeah. But if the system is in place, it helps. You know, like when I leave, I say, you know, watch X, Y, and Z for me. You know, and I put a system in place. And they're not they're not permanent systems, which they should be, but like they're at least like these are the ones that possibly will go down. Mm-hmm. Make sure they don't, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have it because you never know what could happen. Like these systems yeah. are in place no matter what. Yeah, and, and even then, then sometimes the systems don't go well either, sometimes. And then there's another thing that I think most people forget that they don't realize that they can hire somebody for $4 an hour. And so they wait until they make a certain amount of money to hire somebody where you can actually hire right away. I think that most people, even if you're making a grand a month, two grand, hire out as quick as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, contractors, that's what we do. We have contractors and we use them and they are happy. They get their money and they're thrilled. Uh, we mm-hmm. actually don't, we don't, we don't go off, off the continent. We don't, we still, I mean, they're still local to me. I mean, the people that I know, oh, wow. but still it's, you know, I mean, I have a guy who is about 30 minutes north of me and I have a, a lady who's in Brooklyn. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I have a guy who's in the south of me, you know, it might be Philadelphia. more expensive. So those people are going to be a little more yeah. expensive when you're starting off. But they're, not even that, they're not even that bad when you think about it because they don't have. The scheme of things. Yeah. They don't have the, the, the benefits you have to worry about. They get their own stuff. You know, they can do their own jobs when they want to do them. They work with me when they when I have something for them. And it's it's great. It's able to make me lean and nimble and, you know, expand when I need to. So that's great. So did you, were these that, people full-time with you when you were in your ad yeah. agency? Or? Oh, so wow, you're full-time in Columbia. So we I had in Columbia at that time. Wow. You know, there are account managers I might have, I think, paid um, 500. Then I, ha- I also had a CTO <laughs> in Columbia, too. You and need someone down there, exactly. So, so no, it was like I wanted to build technology at that point. I wanted to kind of build like this call center software that like filters and all this information and like tracks things, like all this all stuff. So started- That's awesome. Yeah, why not? So why we not? started <laughs> and it was cheap. Um, and they and it was a win win because they were getting paid really well and yeah because down there five hundred dollars you know is is a lot of money down there. So that's my first advice: hire yeah. abroad, a place where I don't know five hundred or six hundred dollars does goes far, and they're happy. Yeah. They're happy, and then you can start mm-hmm. expanding from there. Exactly. Did you have anyone stateside too eventually, or was it all at Columbia? Uh, we did get some people. We had like uh, account managers that were in person, right? Yeah, so they, so so they could go manager. talk to people. Yeah. yeah, it makes more sense. You need, sometimes you need face, you know, put faces to the name and stuff like that. So, oh, that's wild. And so you did that for a while, and then, and then you ran the marathons and the half Ironman, which is insane to me, you know. And like, that what made you want to do those? I mean, you had a real bone condition. What made you say, "Well, hell with this. I'm going to go run the mar- marathon." Well. My sister has like the very severe, and it's called osteogenesis imperfecta. Oh, yeah. And I think, um, I think there's a movie. That, what was it? Uh, Breakable. What's that yeah, guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. He had it right. So yeah. I have this level, but I didn't know until I ran the seventy point three Ironman, and I did. That's a, where they find out. Yeah, I had a stress fracture. And that's when they found out I had it. And I was like literally walking on it for a month and not even realizing it. Until well, my tough. employees were like, I've seen you do some crazy races. You've never popped an ibuprofen and you are popping it every morning. And they're like, you oh, got it. It hurts. Yeah. yeah. Cause I was just like, oh, maybe I'm just sore. This is the, the half Ironman was brutal. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> the goal is I mean, to maybe do. It sounds brutal. Yeah. The goal is to do a full Ironman when science catches up to, because like my cartilage and my hip is one third gone. Oh so, yeah, you don't want you want to you want to make the other two thirds go away. You want to like, let's let, let's get it generating again first. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, that's so you did that. You did the New York Marathon and the Boston Marathon. So it's like the two big, you know. I mean, these are like top notch marathons. I mean, like, these aren't just like, I mean, I mean, Philadelphia has a marathon great. You know, like, I mean, I'm from Philly, so I'm proud of it. But like, yeah, this, I mean, you hear about the Boston, Boston marathon, you hear about the, the New York marathon. You know, yeah. it's like, this is a big deal. So, was that after the, was that before or after the Ironman? That was uh, before I did those. And then I was like, oh, let's go for the next challenge. And that's when I did. 
But and then you like, gotta that, take a break. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting during that process. That's when the concept of owners up came about. Cause here I was training for the Boston marathon. And even though I've done New York marathon, I was a collegiate athlete, like uh, cross country and everything. Uh, oh, so you're a runner. So oh, that, that makes more sense. You're a runner. I love yeah, that kind it's, of craziness. Yeah. It's in my wheelhouse, right? That intensity. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. I'm a biker, but if even that. I'm yeah. going to do the century ride this year. That's my challenge. Yeah. Well, that's a little oh. bit easier on the hips though. That's easier on the hips. Yeah. But on the butt, it's going to be a little different. Yeah. Your yeah. butt's going to be sore for a while. I've been, I've been a century and it hurts. <laughs> no, every day hurts. If you don't, <laughs> I, I, did a bro- I broke one up. I've done a, like I did a century over a few days. Oh. And every and if you stop, don't oh, yeah. stop. Just do your century. Just get it done and pay the price and you'll be happy. Goal is August. Oh, that'd be nice. And in Minnesota? Yep. I'm gonna do it. It'll be Minnesota. gorgeous. That's like the perfect time because it won't be too high. Well, it's Minnesota. Who knows with Minnesota? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you get yeah, really cold winters, but you also used to have really nice I know you used to oh, have friends have in Minnesota. Beautiful summers, yeah. And then oh, so it'll be perfect for a century ride. It's I'm perfect. So it's just getting the time in and with two toddlers, like because you need to have two like toddlers. Are they twins? No, I have a two and a four year old. Well, they're gonna turn two and four. All right, so you have a toddler and a punk. And a punk, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, four year old. <laughs> the, the, the toddlers, you think they're punks until they turn four, and it's, it gets worse. It gets worse. Oh no! I have an eleven year old. Oh my god, it's 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 a it's a it's a ride. It's a trip to say the least. So anyhow, so you've done a lot. You've done the corporate grind to twenty five, and then you did the crazy thing that we, you know, I did too. You know, start a business. What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur in your mind? Uh, the, so there's a pros and cons to it, right? It's a freedom there is. to I'm like, ask you the cons too. Yeah. 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 It's freedom to do anything, uh, to just think of something kind of actually get to see it to fruition. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause like sometimes when you work at a company, you really don't know what's going on. The con mm-hmm. is shiny object syndrome, right? It's like, Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. And then you're kind of like zigzagging everywhere and not having a big purpose. And it happens mm-hmm. to entrepreneurs. I would say. Late, it keeps on until like, I don't know, they, they have a board that keeps them accountable. Right. Even then sometimes they're like, nah, nah, I want to do this. They're like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Yeah. Yep. That's wild. Then what keeps you up on, on at night besides your kids? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm actually a good sleeper. So what you're saying, awesome. like, yeah, that's a rare one, right? I think that's I'm a rare one for entrepreneurs. I always yeah. worry. Yeah. Uh, what am I worrying about? No, recently haven't been worrying, which is That's good. That's great. Just rocking and rolling. That's what I like to hear. So here, right, here's the big question: What is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Besides a set of running shoes, was that, that looks like the phone. I never thought I was going to be one of those people who pay with Apple Pay. I was like, who is will ever fun? do that? And now I'm like, oh, you don't carry Apple Pay? Oh, great! I don't have a credit card on me. Like, how am I going to pay? Yeah, I know it's it, it's insane. And, and then, then what about what about on the woo woo side? Like you know what what do you carry internally? You know, with you oh, all the, the time. Values and stuff. <laughs> yeah. The woo woo side. The uh, woo woo side. That's a technical term. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So mine is more about looking to like values and then really mm-hmm. seeing. Actually, it's further now that I have kids. Once you have kids, your legacy changes and how you think about life. Now you're not like chasing this goal just to have it. Before I think I was ego driven. And now yeah. I'm driven to make an impact and a legacy. Like who's going to remember me if when I go, <laughs> I, yeah. thumbs up. Great. Yeah, uh, exactly. like, Thank you, Macintosh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who's going to remember? It's because it better be the kids. That's it. Everyone yeah. else after a while is just going to be like gone. Look at, look at Michael Jackson. We remember him, but 10, 20 years from now, I don't know how many people are going to remember. Who knows? They remember, they remember his music more than they remember him, which for, for him is probably a good thing. <laughs> it's true. Exactly. You want to remember the music, not remember the guy, because you know he, he was he was questionable. So this is awesome. So what so what's going up with owners up lately? Like what's what's the big push this this year? Because we're at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So one of the big things that and it comes back to hiring somebody abroad. I think people need to hire a VA. And what yes. ends up happening is they hire a V virtual assistant, but they have them only doing admin work. Right. And no, they need to have them to do marketing work. Right. Yeah. So getting yourself on podcasts, 
uh, going on LinkedIn, figuring out who you should be targeting and having those conversations and starting those conversations. And they right? love doing that. If you're a VA, you love doing that stuff. That's what matters. And see, Apple agrees with me. <laughs> Yeah, so I know it's just a fun little feature is Mac. But yeah, I think yeah, so let's put a thumbs up when someone moves their hand. Like, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> no, supposedly when you do a heart, it does this like heart thing too. Oh, your hearts. Yay. <laughs> uh, now, now, now this has made the podcast. Very awesome. That's awesome. But um, so where can people find you online? Where do you hang out the most? Like on where's your watering hole online? I would say LinkedIn is my space. Mm, That's where I'm posting yeah. most of my content and just engaging. That's awesome. And we'll have that in the show notes along with your, um, the grit owners, up, the owners up slash RAP. What's that? Is that your course? No, it's just a thing to help me stay focused every single day. R is kind of like, um, what you end up doing today. So uh -huh. like actually a review what you accomplished some days as an entrepreneur, you're just like, whoa, this day was intense and I don't know what I accomplished, oh, right? I hate that feeling, yeah, that happened, yeah. <laughs> and then so this is kind of like making you realize like, okay, I did a bunch of busy work, but is this going to move the needle? So taking that time mm -hmm. to review. A is yes. for assess, one through five. How is it? Was it an awesome day? What's a five? Now reverse engineer. Look at all your fives every month and be like, how can I make all my days awesome? And if yeah, they're not, that. how can I delegate it? And well, then that's people, awesome. Prioritize three things, the top three things that you need to get done. So and I like to do a cutoff. Like, what are the three things I need to get done by 12 o'clock? And that's it. Because everything else gets hijacked, right? Something Oh, yeah, happens. the kids come home or the kids walk yeah. in the door. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Yeah. Husband gets on a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's fun. So, Tanya, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been so much fun. And guess what? We'll see everyone next time. Awesome. Thank you for having me. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode.